Sam, nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Okay, so you were interviewed by Robert Mueller's team on Friday. By his, by his team. By his team, right. right. By his team, yes, on Friday. And did they ask you about whether Roger Stone met with WikiLeaks? Well, I, well, in general, first of all, I had the voluntary interview, which was earlier, and last week I had grand jury testimony, and I don't want to undermine the evidence that they're presenting to the grand jury, but I also think it's pretty obvious that they asked me about this. I, I won't discuss any other issues. And yes, they asked me about the conversation I had with Roger. Okay, so this is a big deal because Roger Stone is obviously a longtime Donald Trump confidant. And if he was meeting with WikiLeaks, which then revealed that they had these hacked emails from John Podesta and from the DNC, that's a close connection. That's a big deal. And well, so, so yeah. does it seem to you that that's a, a focus of Robert Mueller's? Well, look, I had warned Roger, who I'm very close with, during that last summer. I had warned him repeatedly during that 2016 summer, do not associate yourself with Julian Assange. And I Why? said for two reasons. Yeah. One, at that point, it seemed pretty obvious that Hillary Clinton was going to win, and there was surely going to be a special counsel into these matters. And if there was a Republican majority, I mean, excuse me, a Democrat majority in either body of Congress, then he was going to be called. And little, 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 little do I know that even Donald Trump can get elected, and we still have a special counsel. I mean, that's really an accomplishment by the president. But what did Roger Stone, how did he respond to you when you said, don't deal with WikiLeaks? Roger's going to do what Roger's going to do. Roger's advised me to do what I, not to do certain things. We're very stubborn people. And I think Roger's argument is different than mine. I do not believe Julian Assange is a journalist. I do not believe when Julian Assange releases information that shows uh, methods that shows who were co or who's helping the United States. That is not the same as releasing yeah. the Pentagon Papers, which was a study showing that the government knew we were going to lose Fair the Vietnam War. But you do believe that Roger Stone met with WikiLeaks. No, I don't believe it. I believe he told me he did. I just don't believe that he ended up meeting with them. So what did he tell you about that? I was trying to reach Roger and a couple for, you know what I mean? We talk either, we could talk 15 times a week or we cannot talk for two weeks. And I was trying to reach him, and I was like, where the hell where, where the hell have you been? And Roger just said, oh, I, uh, I was with Julian Assange. I met with Julian Assange. And now he says he was joking. Here's what uh, Roger Stone <laughs> says about this. He just said it this week to the Washington Post. Yes. I wish him no ill will, but Sam can maniacally and persistently call you, <laughs> Stone said. This is true, by the way. We're, okay, that part's true. Recalling that Nunberg had called him on a Friday to ask him about his plans for the weekend. I said, I think I will go to London for the weekend to meet with Julian Assange. It was a joke, a throwaway line to get him off the phone. The idea that I would meet with Assange undetected is ridiculous on its face. So, so first of all, Allison, in the Washington Post story, I, would, I did not come out and uh, contact Josh Dawsey, who I spoke to and said, and wanted to, le wanted to say, uh, broadcast to the world. Josh called me and said that they had somebody on background that had said that Roger had told them uh, that he had met with Julian Assange. Yeah, that's but Roger's uh, quote, was directly to was directly discussing it I know, with me. I know, I get it. I so understand. I just want to explain explain that. Yeah, that yes. you weren't the source on that one. I get it. But however, he says it was a joke. Why didn't you see it as a joke? Well, I know it, it's irrelevant how I see it. My issue is when I go to a voluntary interview and I'm told I'm not a subject or target, there is only one violation I can do that could get me in deep trouble, which is not tell the truth. If you don't tell the truth, if you're not a subject or target. You're in trouble. And so your truth is that you still believe that Roger Stone was serious when he told you that he met with Julian Assange. No, my, my truth is Roger told me that. I would also say, I, can't, I don't want to get into the specific specifics, but the emails Roger told me were coming out. Well, I actually will. Roger told me the emails were going to be about the Clinton Foundation. I had asked Roger if Assange had any new information about Benghazi. Now, look at the emails that Assange released. They neither had anything to do with Benghazi or the Clinton Foundation. And this, you know, Yeah, that... but there is something fishy about all of this because Roger Stone tweeted all of these things. We have a few of them. I'll just right. read a few because this was before WikiLeaks put it out, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so before WikiLeaks ever put right. out their hacked emails from the DNC, he said, trust me, it will soon be Podesta, John Podesta's time in the barrel, hashtag crooked Hillary, okay? So then John Podesta's... <laughs> right. Elite Can I talk about that one? Out. Yeah, go ahead. If you want. Okay, so that one was going on when the Manafort uh, Ukrainian uh, stories were coming out, and people like Roger and me assumed that Podesta's brother, who had profited and made money, and as you know, has to fold his firm, 
And then Roger wrote an, uh, an article in the Daily Caller subsequently yeah. that talked about talked about Podesta's brother working with Ukraine. Yeah, but you're saying this was a lucky guess that it would no, be no, John no, Podesta's no. time in the barrel. Like, no, no, no. Time know? in the barrel. Time in the barrel can also mean time in the barrel. Like you're gonna, we're gonna have an article about you. You're gonna be exposed as well. Okay. Uh, now, now the other ones are very problematic. Okay, Let's go over the them. Pro here are the problematic ones that Roger Stone seems Correct. to know. Uh, uh, on Wednesday, Hillary Clinton is done. Hashtag WikiLeaks. <laughs> Here's another one. I have total confidence that WikiLeaks and my hero, Julian Assange, will educate the American people soon. Hashtag lock her up. Next, liberals think Assange will stand down. That's wishful thinking. Payload coming. <laughs> okay? I mean, these are, this is a man who knows something. Next, Julian Assange will deliver a devastating expose on Hillary at the time of his choosing. I stand by my prediction. These were all in the days before the WikiLeaks document dump came out. He sounds like he knows something. Roger's got to explain that. That's not for me, and I agree with you that those would be problematic. That those are problematic. And once again, I, I am not a Julian Assange supporter. So right, but you are a Roger Stone supporter. He's correct. your mentor, right? Correct. He's a. Well, He's, I don't know if he wants. To <laughs> because I mean, have you had a, a split? Are you? No, we have not had a split at all. We have not had a split at all. I. Um, but is what, he comfortable with you talking about him? He is he comfortable? I don't know if he's comfortable or not. But the issue is, is once again. This story, as I told you before, I was not, I did not approach the Washington Post. Somebody else did. And then I was called and said that Roger immediately said that he was talking about the conversation I had had, which is why I responded publicly about it. Got it. Um, you have said about what you gleaned from the special counsel, from Robert Mueller's team. Mm -hmm. um, let me just quote you. You say, this is a big deal. Um, and you've said that if they have something on... Donald Trump, it's going to be a very big deal. Right. Well, first of all, in my in my humble opinion, if it is if they find something that's financial, which I don't believe, uh, I've never seen any corruption around there. It has to be something that then candidate Trump did the minute he left, he went down that escalator. It has to be an issue like that. But I don't think that when you meet these people, they are so professional. These are. These aren't bureaucrats. These aren't the type of people I think that are just sitting around uh, collecting 120 plus a year and surfing the web. These are people that could work in any Fortune 50 company and they're not wasting their time and they would wind this up if they had to. I also believe that's why the president needs to eventually meet with Mueller's team if he really wants to wind this up and expedite getting it done. And it's not a witch hunt in your mind. No, it's not a witch. And let me explain why, Allison. Because when I was first called by the FBI agent, it was like the Tuesday after the Wolf book came out. And I was actually, frankly, rude to him. And I had not really looked into this that much. I had stayed away from it. But then, as I have to do, one as a lawyer and one just in general when you work, I look at what the other side is saying. And I read books and I looked into it. And there was a book called Collusion by Luke Hardy. And there was things like that. And Donald Trump, had he just fired Comey and stayed to the Rosenstein rationale yep. in that memo, he, I think he even could have got away with the Lester Holt interview, but then he has the Russians in the Oval Office. I mean, and he doesn't even allow American photographers in. That's, there's something going on there. Very quickly, uh, the last time we saw you was the Samapalooza, <laughs> where you, you know, set a record to be on all sorts of cable shows, and it's... By the, by the way, we beat Fox News in every single... We beat Fox News that hour, so. <laughs> so in total so and demo. Watching the ratings, uh, <laughs> thinking that Sam Nunberg is a big draw, and it sounds like you are, but people were concerned sure. about you. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I was very stressed out that day. Because you've really been called by the special counsel. Not, well, it wasn't that being called by the special counsel. The special counsel, the voluntary interview is actually more stressful than the grand jury testimony. Because in the grand jury, all they want is the information. And I want to just say, too, they've never asked me for my opinion, and especially against in front of this grand jury. They've never asked that. Facts, facts, facts. What do you know firsthand? No hearsay, no, no even double hearsay. So um, I think maybe I, I did too many interviews at that point. But it was a fun day. I, we're still talking about it, you know, and, you know, and I don't want to keep repeating the line. Oh, Sam had a TV meltdown. I thought it was great TV. And I and I thank Aaron for the interview. Well, there you go. Sam, <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Thank you for giving us all this insight.